Welcome back folks, Art of the City TV, live streaming here from San Diego. I have a treat for you today because we are going to travel virtually to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where all the action's happening in Indian country. Even though, as we know, Indian market has not been something that people can travel to this year because it has been shut down because of the COVID, there's still artists that are working and promoting their artwork into galleries and various places. So we're really fortunate because we're going to go into a gallery and we're going to meet this artist, George Rivera. But I thought I would back up a little bit because I'm noticing we're getting lots of new people following the page and welcome if you're just um, coming in to the show here. I wanted to give a little bit of a background of how Art of the City uh, began. And in a nutshell, I started really feeling like it was important to document artists that are living artists that are here documenting history while we're alive. And I took a, a, a crew into some of these artists' studios or galleries or wherever they were showing, and I was able to do some really extensive, in-depth interviews, specifically artists that had lived and resided in a certain area for at least 20 years and had made an impact on the entire world through their art. So these are the artists I um, have chosen. And one of those artists is this artist, George Rivera. He has a really incredible story. I just released the YouTube video. So if you go to Art of the City TV on YouTube, you're gonna see the first Santa Fe episode that has been opened there. But before I go to George, I thought I'd just show you a real quick trailer so you can see these artists if you want to go and uh, watch them. So let me put this up in the stream. And let me minimize my screen there. And let me see if I can get this to play. Uh, and maybe not. <laughs> okay. We're still working on technology, folks, but it is a good one. Go to Art of the City TV on YouTube and you can watch the trailer for all four of the artists that I had an opportunity to go into their studio. And then we are going to see this artist live at a gallery in Santa Fe as we speak. I also wanted to give a shout out because besides myself as a Native American, there are many other Native Americans that are promoting indigenous art. And there's this one called Native American Artists, Musicians, and Writers. I know it's, it's a mouthful, but trust me, I'm gonna say it again, Native American Artists, Musicians, and Writers. They have a very similar goal, and that is to promote artists that are from indigenous cultures here in the United States, Native people, and to spread their artwork and their talent throughout the world. So do me a favor and support that cause because we're kind of, coming together here on this platform as being almost virtual now because we have no galleries that can open. So the more followers we get, the more we spread the awareness. So let's see if we can get George Rivera here. Hi, George. Oh, hi, Ruth Ann. How you doing? Good, welcome. Welcome to Art of the City. I'm excited because we're, you know, we've been kind of sequestered either just in artist studios, but we get to come in and see a gallery setting, which is a first. So tell me where you're at and what, what the gallery is and give us a little bit of a background on that gallery that you show there. Okay, yeah, I'm George Rivera. I'm here in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico and the Santa Fe Art Market is open. And we're here at the Manitou Gallery tonight, and we'll be looking at some of my sculptures as well as some of my recent jewelry. Hey, Doug, how are you? And we'll be talking with uh, individuals that work here in the gallery. You can ask any questions that you like of the gallery staff. Um, but thank you for having us, and thanks for promoting, you know, uh, the Native arts as well as all the other arts that you promote there with your Art in the City program. Thank you, George. It's my pleasure and my honor to be able to bring talent like yourself to the awareness of people, because I think art is essential. It's something that 
we really need. And I'm so excited to see that the gallery is open there. How's the traffic yeah. been? Let me start. Uh, I, it's, it's actually, this is the most I've seen in a while. So it's picking up. And I'll let, uh, I don't do the sales part, but I, I can uh, point the camera at, at people that know what they're talking about. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. This. I'm going to minimize my screen so we can see more of you there. Okay. Okay. And th this is uh, some of the jewelry that I've been working on. It's, uh, it's a line that I call strength and it has the hand gripping a hoop. And, it, and then below it is the theme of whatever each individual piece has. So, we have some in silver. This one has an eye, the all-seeing eye. And then this one is in 18 karat gold with uh, Bisbee turquoise. And so th these are available here at uh, the Manitou Gallery in Santa Fe. Now, you started, uh, George, I'm going to interrupt you there because I, everybody knows you as a sculptor, especially in Indian country because you've done some of these incredible monument pieces. But your background is really jewelry, right? That's how you started it as a um, creative. You know, in junior high, my dad was a jeweler and I used to fumble around with his tools. But yeah, I, I got serious with uh, clay and sculpting. And then I'm, I'm dabbling in jewelry now at Cody Sanderson's studio. In fact, um, I'll be showing here at Manitou next week for the Indian Market weekend, even though Indian Market is not being put on. Uh, Manitou Gallery is having some shows as well as I'm doing another show at La Fonda with several artists. So we will bring the market back and uh, we're going to start that next weekend. That's wonderful. So this is I Charlie and that. Cindy. Hi. And they're Hi. experts in native arts. They're native and they not only are uh, the gallery operators, but they do art as well. Hi, so. so I'm Cindy Hall. I'm the Associate Director of Manitou Galleries, both downtown on Palace Avenue and at our 225 Canyon Road location. This is my wonderful husband, Charlie Hall, who's the Hello. Director of the Palace Jewelers area of Manitou Gallery. So we're here all the time uh, promoting our relatives, uh, promoting all artists, um, promoting our sculpture, and uh, just really celebrating what art has, uh, the meaning that art has to our world right now, especially art has the ability to heal. And um, during these times where it's emotional and anxiety ridden and we're not sure what's coming next, it's been so wonderful to see what our artists are bringing out of their studios. Um, some of our jewelers that are coming next week, we're gonna see some of the best things that we've ever seen from them. You want to tell us a little bit about the artists that are coming here? So Cindy, eight, eight I, I just have a quick artists. question for you guys before you oh, um, go on to give us your all of the artists. How has it been for you folks being shut down? I, you know, I know as a as a gallery owner myself, it, it was really tough to be closed. We were closed here in San Diego for three months. Um, were you folks? Did you have to be completely closed? Uh, yes, we did. And uh, we, we were fortunate enough that we have some um, wonderful clients that still were able to buy online and uh, over text message, email. And, and so we're actually not too far down, but we're, we're still struggling with people coming in the door. Uh, but fortunately, we're one of the establishments here that everybody knows and everybody loves. And so we're, we're not really having a difficult time, but it, we're just trying to make uh, whatever we can this year. Okay. And how long have you folks had the gallery there? Uh, Manitou Gallers has been here for over 21 years, downtown Santa Fe. All right. That's and wonderful. One of the comments that I'd like to add is uh, I was talking with some collectors yesterday, and they were saying how during this quarantine, they were, felt trapped by the same four walls, and they couldn't get out. And they realized by buying new art and putting new art on the walls, those four walls felt very different for them. And that's what we've noticed during, you know, during the shutdown is that that that's been the saving grace for a lot of people is having having new art and new pieces to look at. Oh, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, I, and you probably attest to this as someone who's in the gallery world. I have a whole new appreciation for my art collection because I I've never been stuck at home for three months ever. <laughs> that's right. 
That's wonderful. So let's hear about the artists that are coming on and then we'll get back to George since he's our, our uh, sure. main artist right, of the yeah, show today. Right here. George is with us. I'm so. going to walk in. We're going to talk and look at the gallery at the same time. So our opening next week is with J.D. Challenger uh, and Nicholas okay. Coleman. He's been, they both been represented by Manitou for a number of years. But our jewelers that we will have in the gallery, we're offering 11 jewelers trunk shows um, as if they were going to have their table at market anyway. Um, as you know, many of our, our native relatives have, they make 80 to 90% of their yearly income off of, Indian market. And so we will have uh, Wes Willie, Emmett Navakuku, Albert Lee, Arland Ben, Kenneth Johnson, Dee Nez, Curtis Pete, Daryl Dean Begay, Jennifer Curtis, and Rick Charlie, all here in the gallery at different times for the next five, for the, what is it, the 13th through the 12th through the 16th. 12th through the 16th. Wow, that sounds like a dangerous lineup there. <laughs> I definitely would be maxing my credit cards out because I think, didn't I, I met you guys last year. Yes. That's yes. right. I came into the gallery. Those are all incredible artists. So um, can people see then if they, if they want to see all those artists, they can go online to your website. Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. I have it. I have it on the ticker there. So take a look folks. You can go on to their website and see those. So let's see what George has been up to here. I've got a uh, Buffalo bronze here that, uh, let's see, this is number two of uh, 12. And um, he's, he's, he's got a lot of movement going in. And uh, I really, I like capturing the animal as he's, uh, as the way, when I've seen them and when I study them and I see their movement, that's what I try to capture as well as just how beautiful and muscular they are. And uh, this patina is like a dark brown with some green and golds in it, going uh, to a dark brown again over here. So I was trying to imitate that the color changes in his in uh, the animal's fur. Um, and then also in the room I have uh, the great horse over here, which uh, representing the first Native American on horseback and that, that would have been around the Pueblo Revolt time here in New Mexico, 1680. And so a lot of people don't know that the tribes across America did not have the horses until after 1680. And uh, in 1680, the Pueblos revolted against the Spanish and they won the revolt. As a result, they got the horse. As a result of that, the rest of the tribes got horses in the West. So. That's why this piece is so important. It's first Native American on horseback. Wow, that's incredible. So George, maybe share with the, the viewers, when you are approaching a sculpture like these, and I know you go real big too, you've got those very large monument pieces. Does it start out with the clay or the wax or can you kind yeah, of lead us so through your creative process there? So this, this is a 18 inch scale that I worked in clay. And then this has been enlarged all the way up to uh, 12 feet. Uh, one of the uh, 12 footers is at Buffalo Thunder Resort in Pewaukee Pueblo. And the other is at the, it's a 12 footer at the National Museum of American Indian Smithsonian in DC. Wow, that's uh, stunning. So the first uh, native on horseback, that's been enlarged all the way to 21 feet. It's at my studio, it's amazing. Yeah, I've seen that piece and it, it will take your breath away. It's just stunning. This is a deer dancer. He's uh, again done in clay at this small scale. He's about a 18 inch scale also if he was standing up. Um, but he's been enlarged to 10 feet tall as well. So um, a lot of the earlier pieces, we would enlarge them by hand. Now we use uh, 3D scanning and 3D printing to help expedite and um, move the pieces into a larger scale, uh, actually quite safer. That's, that's and that's for the molds, right? That's to create the molds because when you go that large, it's almost like a puzzle. You have to put all of the pieces together. And I think 
that's a lot of work for you too, welding and finishing. Yeah, it takes a small army to sculptors to put these together. Um, and they all have to be sculptors so that they can understand how important it is to get all the anatomy right and all the texture and color right. So um, everybody that works on my pieces are all artists. So George, what is, what is your, do you do research on the stories as well? When you're looking at, for instance, you know, you just gave us some historical facts about the first native on horseback. How do you approach the, I guess the, um, the passion behind the pieces that you're choosing to sculpt? Well, I started out um, sculpting themes that were within uh, my neighborhood, you know, here in the Pueblos. And then I branched out. I uh, did a piece for the Pachanga tribe and I'm looking forward to working with them again, as well as uh, with your tribe, the Rincon. And what I'll do in, in those situations is uh, meet with the people, listen to the stories, and then come up with compositions that are going to best represent the people in a, in a manner that uh, is not just respectful, but it's something that will endure time and it will always be a great piece and it'll always uh, show them in the best light and so that means sometimes meeting with the cultural uh, people uh, the business people uh, going through contracts and all that stuff but uh, it's it really is uh, the biggest reward is to um, bring the pieces in and then see the reaction of the of the people uh, to the sculptures that I've helped them well, and I know on a lot of those um, on, on a lot of those projects, you really do a lot of research to make sure that it's accurate to because you're telling the story about the past, and I think that you really have taken so much time to make sure that you've got the expressions of the of the people correctly, or you know the the clothing that they wore, especially at that piece at Pachanga that. That, by the way, folks, if you're in Southern California, that is a must see. Just jump right off the freeway to their casino, but it is a multi-figure piece. How many um, people oh, did there's, you sculpt? There's 13, 13 over life-size figures, and they're playing the peon game, uh, referred right. to sometimes as a stick game or a hand game. And it's an ancient game that has a lot of relevance today because uh, when I went and watched it, what I noticed was there was a lot of language preservation within the activity and uh, cultural preservation just throughout the whole event. And I was uh, totally amazed. And I feel like the luckiest guy to be able to try to portray that in a sculpture and, and capture the, the moment. And so I had to understand what the game was and talk to the people and then express that in a sculpture. You did. You did. I wish I had a picture of it. I'd pop it up on the screen. But um, that was probably one of the most amazing sculptures and big. It's all life size. So it's all of these people that are gathered around full life size. And George created these sculptures so that it really feels like the sculptures are interacting across the way in this game called Pion, which is one of the very first gambling games known to Native tribes, at least on our end of the uh, of the continent here. Yeah, and it was it was an important uh, argument when the tribes were arguing uh, against the state for the right to have gaming. Uh, that game of Pion was brought up and saying that, uh, we've always had gambling, so this is part of our tradition. And the right. Supreme Court of the United States recognized that the tribes always had gambling and that. The, those gambling games were not prohibited. So that was the beginning of Indian gaming being legalized throughout the country of the United States. So I thank you guys from your neighborhood and getting that established. <laughs> yeah. I thank my chairman because he was definitely one of the forerunners on that whole project. So what are you working on? Um, are you working on a live piece here at the gallery or do you, uh -huh. did you just bring in a new piece? Well, let me show you this piece is uh, Geronimo. And um, I, I saw a lot of pictures of Geronimo as growing up. And, you know, he's um, without question the most famous Native American that ever lived. And, you know, when I travel the world, 
um, and I mention his name, everybody knows who he is. But I always wanted to sculpt him, and then I started doing research on him, come to find out he is from New Mexico. So he's a Chiricahua Apache, um, and they were within New Mexico uh, and Arizona and Mexico. Um, but uh, Geronimo was born on the New Mexico side. And so this piece means a lot to me because he was the last Native American to fight for the freedom and the lifestyle of, that the Native people had. And so although he was looked at as, you know, um, by the U.S. government back then as, you know, a, a rebel, you really, you, today, you would, when I see people out protesting in the streets and trying to change, you know, being... Uh, suppressed uh, by police or governments or whatever. I was like, this was the ultimate protester right here. And he fought for living free. Uh, and he was the last one to do it before the tribes ultimately all became under the United States. So uh, super important historically for me. Uh, I did research on him, uh, all of this bow and arrow, the rifle, the dagger, his pistol on the other side, the Apache saddlebags. It all, it all comes from doing research. He's got the, uh, the long Chiricahua Apache moccasins. And then Wow, he, that's so detailed. Yeah, and I put him on a white horse. The horse is uh, balancing on one hoof. And I and when I uh, decided to do him, I wanted to put him in action. I didn't want to put him sitting on a rock or, you know, sitting there holding his rifle, posing. I wanted to put him in a pose that when people would have seen him, this is what they would have seen him out in battle, protecting his, the lifestyle of the Apache people. I also joke around and said, if you saw him like this, that's probably the last thing you saw. <laughs> <laughs> that's true and I, I would imagine this piece resonates with you because a lot of folks don't know George not only is George an incredible sculptor and jewelry maker but he's also quite the voice for his people there um, in um, what is the in the Pueblo but what is the specific tribe you're oh, from George I'm from, I'm from the Pueblo of Milwaukee and uh, I was in tribal leadership for 22 years straight and so I, I dealt a lot with uh, state federal government and uh, worked on getting gaming legalized here, doing economic development, all for the purpose of providing great services back to the people like in education and housing and just basic needs that they needed. Um, so really uh, my goal was to promote the arts and give people hope. So I had to take on a leadership role for 22 years and, Start and I love that, George, because I think one of the things that it does is it really shows that, you know, the arts, just like that story you just shared with us, and now we're seeing it in this sculptural format and your interpretation of this great leader, you yourself are, you have those like almost a duality of talents. You're, you're an artist and probably one of the most important artists in Indian country but you're also taking that other side of your talent, which is for business and you're serving your tribe. So I think, you know, you in a way remind me of that sculpture, you know, always willing to put yourself out there. And I see that in what you, what you do, not just with your art, but with what you do in the community there, it's really impressive and needed. Well, thank you. And I was fortunate to um, be around some great leaders at the time that I was a leader and, learned a lot from them. And in fact, one of them was an Apache. Uh, Wendell Chino was someone that I worked with and looked up to. And uh, my uncle Jake, who was uh, the governor for about 30 years, uh, you know, those, those people taught me and then I took it to the next level. And that's what I hope for the next generation that they take it to the next level. When you think about art, George, and you think about, you know, historically, you know, the fact that natives have always been involved in, that's what really makes us who we are is our art and culture. What do you think is happening now within the younger folks that are coming up, you know, like 
from the college that you went to, or are you seeing that there are more native artists coming on the scene or are you feeling like it's getting suppressed? No, I, I, I see growth. I definitely see growth. I just tutored uh, a young woman from uh, the Navajo Nation at my studio, uh, was showing her how to work the figure in, in clay and then ev it'll eventually become bronze. And, you know, we had a few weeks this summer in the studio and I, I had her do three pieces and she, it, she had done other mediums before. And so this was her first chance to really um, get involved with the clay. And, and this is kind of an old style of uh, working. And, um, and, and I'm involved with the Institute of American Indian Arts and their foundation board. So I see a lot of up and comers and a lot of, uh, I have a lot of hope for the uh, youth that are out there. Uh, in the arts, but also in, in leadership. Right. Um, I say my two children are both uh, quite involved in Native American um, leadership positions. So my son is uh, involved in the politics pretty heavily. He's uh, one of the Western directors for uh, Joe Biden's campaign. And my daughter uh, worked for the governor of New Mexico, uh, both as congresswoman and, and as the governor here. And she just moved to the Department of Indian Affairs to become the director of tribal uh, relations. So they, they know about the arts, but they also, and they know the importance of the arts, but then they also know um, that there's a lot of issues within the tribal communities that need to be addressed. And right. art, art is one, and, and one of the most important uh, venues for people to express themselves. Um, and what, what expressing yourself does is it tells you your story. And when you learn your story, you can see your community in, in a much more clear uh, perspective. And that then that helps uh, to identify what are the things that need to be improved upon or changed. And so, um, you know, I, I think art gives a lot of clarity. It's, it's pretty much uh, the spearhead for culture. And, um, and when you look at history, it's art that we look at that has documented who people were and and you know today we can see um, how we got to where we're at through the arts that is so well said and I I've been always a big proponent for that you're absolutely right that is you I mean I would say that the art shows our own personality in the time that we live and that's the document that gets left behind for generations to see what were we about what were we involved in what was important to us as people and so i think with what you're creating you also your work also has a contemporary flair because i know you've done also sculptures of important living people i remember yeah. you telling me that you had a you had been commissioned on several by several different politicians to do those sculptures so it's not just of, people uh, from the past. Yeah, there's a Medal of Honor recipient that uh, is in front of the Santa Fe City Hall that I sculpted at nine feet tall. And it was the family um, of the recipient that asked me to uh, sculpt it for him. And I did him in a very you know modern, realistic way. Um, and then I started incorporating stainless steel and bronze. And so that's what you're looking at now is stainless steel. So it opened a, the door for me to um, get even more contemporary with the metals that I was using. And so, you know, bronze is kind of the traditional casting material, stainless steel. It, um, it's pretty edgy. You can do quite a bit with it and you can pull off some really amazing polishes, get a lot of texture. And it's just, it's about twice as tough to deal with as far as the metal goes. I would say it would have to be flawless if you're working with um, stainless because you can see every little imperfection if they're there. Right. Yeah, it, it, it definitely has to be seamless. That is stunning. Oh, we, we were standing in front of the Valentino sculpture. This is uh, my son, Valentino, uh, when he was six years old dancing and he learned to be an amazing hoop dancer. 
and again they incorporated uh, bronze and stainless steel and this piece has been enlarged to uh, life size so five feet tall it sits in front of the uh, Museum of Indian Arts and Culture here in Santa Fe it's right at the front door it's the entrance piece and George I not to get into the whole story about your son because it is pretty emotional but um, you started a foundation based on his passing at a very young age. And that I also wanted to share with people because I think it's not just about the tradition of hoop dancing, but it's also about reaching out to kids that you know really need some direction sometimes and some support. And maybe you can share a little bit about that founda foundation. Yeah, unfortunately my son passed away to eight years old he was an amazing hoop dancer and um, before he passed uh, he was injured and then before he passed he he wanted to make sure that he was known for who he was and not his injury so we took you know his what was most important to him was being a great hoop dancer so we took that and we created a foundation called the lightning boy foundation and we teach children uh, to hoop dance and also to perform and so they've performed here at the gallery for years. They perform on the plaza here in Santa Fe. Um, we've traveled all over the country. We've traveled in Europe before. Um, and um, it, it, it's amazing what teaching the youth this dance does to them. Their uh, confidence level just goes through the roof. You know, all of a sudden, they're, they've gone from the shyest kid to somebody that's performing in front of dozens or hundreds of people. And then that becomes part of their lifestyle. So they're not afraid of people anymore. They're not afraid of accomplishing something in front of people. And so um, we see a lot of success from our youth as they move from just hoop dancing into their careers. They walk around with their heads up, proud of their native culture, uh, proud of how great a dancers they are and ready to perform at the drop of a hat. That's wonderful. And we're going to have a um, show where we have Steve Laurent on to do a memorial for his son, who was, I believe, the five-time world champion hoop dancer that passed away, your good friend. So that will be something that folks will be able to actually see that. Nakota Laurent uh, was a master instructor for our kids and uh, he was a nine-time world champion he danced for Cirque du Soleil for three years and traveled the world and just was an amazing young man that uh, gave a lot of his life and his energy to the youth. And you know, he wanted to see them get better. And, and uh, we were really fortunate to have him as the spearhead for our programs. That's, that's wonderful. So we will make an announcement when that um, tribute will be happening and I'm sure that you'll be there as well because you were such close friends with that whole family and still are so I think that's a really important thing George you have so many things that you bring to the table it's almost like hard to have an interview with you because I don't even know what to talk about there's so many things that you do um, outside of your art but going back to your art I know that this has been a tough time for you as well with the art because a lot of your contracts were not canceled, but definitely put on hold. I know our tribe was working with you to commission you to do a large piece. How has that affected you um, just with this coronavirus and your ability to create? Well, I, I feel, you know, for everybody that's impacted by the virus and, um, understand the severity of it uh, worldwide and um, I'm looking forward to getting back to uh, working on the projects uh, it definitely slowed things down um, but uh, I started making jewelry you know I, it was like it, it gave me a little bit of time to just kind of dabble into something else so I'm doing a little bit of jewelry now which I probably wouldn't be doing because I'd be too busy making your sculpture and Right. The commissions that I had. So, um, you know, I'm st I, st I need to be creative. And so um, I'm going to be creative um, wherever and wherever I'm at with whatever tools I have or with no tools. It just, it's just part of who I am. And I, I've got to be creative. 
And I, I, I want to uh, say that we are having a show uh, next weekend, uh, which is going to be, you know, like the emergence, re-emergence of uh, Indian market, or what I call the Santa Fe market, uh, which is not just Indian market, but the, the art market in Santa Fe needs to be um, revived. And so I'm looking forward to that. Next weekend, we're going to, a bunch of artists, friends of ours are going to be having a show at La Fonda, as well as here in Manitou Gallery and some of the other galleries around. But we're gonna we're gonna push it, you know. It, it it is time for people to get back to work and open the doors and do it safely. Um, we'll be having masks on and social distancing, all the important things. But artists like other occupations don't have a lot of leeway um, and don't have a, a source of revenue coming from the right. government or anywhere else. You know the. Artists are the greatest hustlers. You know, we we, we put out put out what we can with our talent, and then you, you got to have this other talent to go out and hustle it. So, we're we're looking forward to starting that back up. And so I've been coining the phrase, uh, "The Santa Fe Art Market is open," and and so uh, Manitou had the first gallery opening uh, after the coronavirus. So when the state said the galleries could open. We had an opening um, that week, and so. Um, did you have anyone? Did anyone show up? Oh yeah, we had people That's show great. up throughout the day, throughout the day, and and now that um, you know we've been op- the city and the state and the galleries have been open for a little while longer. We're getting a, a great foot traffic coming in. It's increasing, and people are all wearing their masks and being safe. I think that's wonderful, and you're right, it is so needed, and specifically for Native folks that live in reservations that are not close to a major city, a lot of those folks are creating all year long for this one week's event. And so they come and they show their wares, they show their you know crafts and also fine art. So I agree with you, George. It's really important that we get things moving in the right direction because that is the income source for a lot of folks, you know, and especially in Indian country and where you you folks are located. So if you're watching this, please share this stream on your Facebook page. So maybe one or two people will see something and go to these websites and support artists like George. Because it is, um, you know, it is important not only for the financial aspect, but also for these artists to feel supportive creatively. Because that is another thing, kind of like a performer that goes, you know, they're they're practicing all year long, and then they go to the big concert that they're doing. This is what these artists are doing to bring their work forward. So mentally, it's very important as well for their spirits. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing that awareness through your show as well, Ruth. And we're going to well, watch a, a little something. Give you a few shots of, you know, while, while we've been doing this interview, I've been watching and there's probably been at least 40 to 50 people, new people that have been. Oh, there. good. Let's see the gallery and then maybe give us a little peek outside so we can feel like we're traveling virtually to Santa Fe. We'll Beautiful gallery. I'm put. I'm putting my mask on so I can walk around. Okay. Wow! Look at this, folks. I hope you guys have your um, your margarita in hand on the rock, Santa Fe style. <laughs> yeah. So you can see there's everybody's got their masks on and doing their shopping. Oh, this is going to make me a little sad because I would be there right now. Yeah. So that's that's what's going on. There's a plaza uh, in the distance over there. There's the uh, Museum of Fine Arts right next to us there. Beautiful day here in Santa Fe. Oh, it's gorgeous. Thanks for sharing that, George. I don't know. It's a little bit of a tease, but I guess that's about as close as I'm getting to Santa Fe for Indian market this year. 
Yeah, well, next week we're going to be doing that show that I told you about. So if there's a way to um, plug in something next week, we'll be shooting live. I mean, we'll be there for two days in La Fonda. Okay, and well, we'll have to come up with a way to do that for sure. Yeah, and I'll be posting stuff on Facebook. And we've got a great lineup of artists and, you know, artists that have, you know, been out there and traveled the country, traveled the world with their artwork and and they're um you know anxious to get things going again absolutely we are here you know we're five five hours a day social distancing at my gallery so it's starting to pick up so we're seeing a little bit of a a light at the end of the tunnel there so that is um important for the arts important for the artists and important for the world at the end of the day you know the world needs art it's an essential item in my opinion so somebody like you, George, you're spreading that awareness, not only for your own art, but you've always been so giving to the community. And I know everybody that I talk to who knows you um, just speaks so highly of who you are as an individual. So I, I'm, I can't wait till we can start working on the project here. Um, and in the meantime, folks, go to George's website. I put it up here, georgeriverastudios.com. I believe there's also a area on his website that you can learn about Lightning Boy Foundation. That's a great cause to support. It really supports a lot of young people. And I think that's important, the next generation. And then I also put Manitou Gallery's website on here. So you can go to their page on Facebook, like their page. I think the more that we can spread the awareness and the love you know, not only of art, but just the positivity. It's a really great thing. So help us out with that. And George, I'm going to let you get back to your show. I hope you have a really great show. Sell a lot of artwork. You deserve all of the success. Well, thank you. And we will talk to you soon. Good okay, time. George. Be all blessed. Right. Give my best to your bye -bye. family. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. I, I cannot wait to get back to Santa Fe. If you folks haven't been there, I'm going to give you a little treat today. Go on to the YouTube site, Art of the City TV, and you're going to be able to see a little snippet of my interview. And I, I don't give up that easy. Allison, who's out there probably watching, she, she has uh, been such a, a great support. Thank you, Allison, for all that you do for Art of the City. I know you have a passion for the arts. And you've been doing, you've been supporting the arts for many years. And I know you would tell me, don't give up. Let me see if I can get this to come back on the screen so I can show you, give you a little sneak preview. Let me see if I can make it work. And I'd like to close the show out this way if we can. Let's see. And geez, well, I think I'm a big fail on that folks, but go to Art of the City TV and take a look at the Santa Fe. You'll see Art of the City TV, Santa Fe. Make sure you check that out. You're going to see George Rivera's entire story there. I was gonna give you a little teaser of it, but um, better for you to just go see it. Have a great weekend folks, be blessed. Enjoy the beauty that's around you, whether you are an artist or you collect art. Make sure that you take a minute and just look around at your own collection, because I'll tell you, this is something that's just on loan to you, just like my collection. We collect art, we support these artists that are living in the time that we're here, but in reality, we're just borrowing it and it will be passed down to the next generation and then it'll get passed down to the next generation after that. So art is such an important part of who we are, and I feel just so honored to bring this to you every week. So next week, we have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, live streaming at 4 p.m. We have an amazing artist coming on Monday, Cody Sanderson. He has taken the jewelry world by storm. And then we have a wonderful chef that's coming in, on Wednesday, Lois, and I'm going to probably botch her last name up, so I'm not even going to attempt it. 
but she is going to do a cooking demonstration. She's a native chef and she's going to be bringing indigenous food in to show us how to cook these amazing recipes at home. So that's going to be a really big one. And then on Friday, we have another Native American painter coming on and I'm going to save that one for you because I got to get the confirmation. But have a great weekend. Be blessed. Live streaming here. I'm Ruth Ann, your host, Art of the City, and I will see you Monday.